We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hey, everybody. This is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Makes me go proud of you. Yeah. Other half of me, I think I'm getting weary. Believe me, I'm in love. I don't know where we going. Better half of me, now I'm getting weary. Believe me, I'm in love. I don't know where I go, but you're the other half of me. We're giving a small little taste. <laughs> we're gonna do, we're gonna do the full on and have you guys hear the this incredible. I'm I'm astounded. I, I'm taking off my glasses. We had to just give you a little bit of a taste of Mr. Michael Brown, music artist based out of Canada. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> Everybody, I love. We're we're all waiting. Um, yeah, let's turn it down a little bit lower. I don't want to give it out too much. <laughs> it's like, they're probably like, wait, wait, Steven, don't talk. We want to hear the full song. We're going to play it. You're going to hear the full, this is an exclusive. We're doing a full music drop, Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Michael Brown, this song is called Other Half. I tell you, I, 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 it was because of the Lord. I, I, I always come across and find the right people at the right time to interview. And I came across Michael's Instagram profile and I was like, wait a minute. Who is this? How is he a secret? He shouldn't be a secret. Well, he's not a secret no longer. 200 countries and counting. Power 98.5 satellite radio. Whether you're listening on the iOS or Android app or on Power 98.5 uh, our, our website at power985.com. Click that bottom right-hand icon. It's like a pinkish, purplish color. My team is here. If you've got any questions for Michael, you want to give a shout-out to Michael, you want to share some love about Michael, whether on the iOS or Android app or on a website, click that bottom right-hand icon, send us your message, and we will share about it. I'll talk about it live here with you. Uh, big shout out to my team, Christina, everyone else. Uh, we have a really, really great day today. So music artist Michael Brown with us uh, this morning. Uh, then we have country music artist Derek Skelton today at 1 p.m. Pacific. So we've got Michael this morning, Derek at 1. Uh, but definitely, you know, check your time zone of uh, when you're going to be able to listen to these lives. New music is always being uploaded. We also added three tracks of Michael's uh, to the playlist today. I'm going to go over right now with you. We are streaming uh, in our playlist, Other Half, Loyal, and Without You, all by Michael Brown. So, you know, this is his new home. I hope he gets on other radio stations as well. However, Michael has a new home here on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio, and we're, we're very excited to have him. We're going to go in, uh, find out all about him. I'm going to go over, bring you up to speed about Michael. To everyone who doesn't know who Mr. Michael Brown is, uh, we're going to 
We're going to tell you all about him in a minute. Uh, also, January 15th, we've got actor Eric Nelson with us at 11 a.m. Pacific. January 16th, we have Robbie Jester. I don't know if you guys saw the new Netflix show, Pressure Cooker. It's a really, really good show. Uh, Robbie won. He won the, uh, was it was it a million or $100,000? I thought it was, I think it was $100,000 he won, but he won the grand prize. And then we have HGTV's Mike Pyle on the 17th at 11 a.m. Pacific. Fun-filled packed day. Uh, let's go ahead. Do we um, do we have anything? Yeah, let's check. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mr. Michael Brown is a Zim. Oh my God, I'm Michael. Is that Zambian artist? Yes. Yes. Man. All right. So uh, I'm I'm keeping you. We usually mute you guys so we can get everything out and, and, and express, but I'm going to have you here with me. All right, we've got Michael Brown. Okay. He is a Zambian artist based in Canada, born on the 15th of October in 1995. Now, I'm going to tell you. It was I, actually 5 October, 5th uh, October. October 5th, 1995. You've got yeah. to explain this to me. Educate me. Okay. I never yeah. heard of this before. What is a Zambian artist? Okay, so um, I come from um, Africa, and um, Zambia is like Central Africa. So you know where South Africa is, yeah. right? Yeah, that's where I think yeah. that's where actress Charlize Theron is around or from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty in like a landlocked country, and it's a beautiful country. Yeah, and we we have um, Victoria Falls as one of our biggest, which is one of the the biggest, um, yeah. Oh, really? Both. Yeah, yeah. Your nickname is Brown, and at a young age, yeah. initially, you decided to add uh, your first name, Michael, to it. Yes. I like it. So, here's a funny story, though, because I, I used to get called um, in, in school back when I was, like, really young, like, Brown, and people would actually break it, you know, like, Brown. You know, and then the slang. So, because we're not so good with our L's and R's, so people would say blah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I just decided, like, later on, as I was growing up, I was like, okay, you know what? It's a fun name, uh, Michael Brown, and just continued with it as I grew up. Yeah. What's incredible is you're so young, you got a family. I mean, you've got Thank the, you. you're married, right? Yeah. And I have one baby. He just was born like um, a month ago. I'm going yeah, to your Instagram, baby boy. <laughs> I'm going to your Instagram right now. How old are you? I'm 27. I think we talked about this before when we first chat. Yes. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. You could play a 19 year old on maybe Netflix or something. You look so young. <laughs> I can't believe. But you. Listen. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me on this show, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hey, thank the Lord for it. We found each other yeah, for man. a reason. It is a sign. It is a sign, man. Like, uh, when you called me, I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't even believe this. I was talking to my <laughs> wife. I was like, babe, I can't believe this. Uh, she was like, literally, uh, yeah, I was like, almost about to blow in the house. I was like, okay, this is a sign for God, and I'll take it one day at a time. <laughs> I was kind of nervous, though, but, like, I'm, I'm getting better. Yeah. How, did you ever, here's the thing. Have yeah. you always believed and known you were ready for this? I've always known because, okay, let me just start from the beginning, right? Like when I started with all this music thing. So I was pretty like young, like I was like, let me just say five. And my dad bought like a guitar at home. And he would always notice me going under the bed, trying to pluck the guitar. So my dad was just like, okay, this kid is so interested in this music thing. So I started playing guitar when I was like maybe uh, eight. And then my mom put me on stage when I was 10. Like, I literally have a picture of that. It's so funny. Because I'm putting on, like, baggy clothes and stuff. And with, like, a lineup of, of, of girls. <laughs> it's funny. Dancers and stuff. So my mom put me on that stage because she saw my potential from, like, when I was young. And also, we have, we used to have, when I was pretty young, like, a day 
when I'd present like a song in the house and my mom and my dad would would actually listen to me and, you know, tell me like, Oh, this is not how you do it, this is how you do it, you know what I mean? And enjoy our little performances in the house and it got bigger and better, yeah, as I went and grew. Yeah. You're and that's when I knew from the beginning, I was like, I am meant for this and in each and every place I go to I always make sure I learn and I've always learned from other people too. Mm-hmm. And yeah, with this music, it's, it's just my passion from the day, from day go. Yeah. For those that are tuning in, we've got music artist, Michael Brown. He's an award-winning singer, songwriter, and producer recently released an incredible moving song track called other half. Tell us Thank about you, that. Who was your main inspiration or what was your main inspiration of how Other Half, you know, is now really taking off yeah. and people are loving it? Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, uh, I take it as a sign from God because I literally dropped that song last year. So it was on my album, my, my EP, which is like extended playlist. So it was like song number four. But I, last year, which was, 2020, 22, right? So I got married in November and I decided I was always thinking my, my in my life, I was always thinking if I ever get married, I'm going to dedicate an album to my wife. And I was creating it. I had a chance to create it with her and also tap into high emotions. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to dedicate all this music to her. I could have done like a full album, but I did like a short learned album, which is like six songs. And she loved it. She loved each and every song. And she got to sing on one of the songs, which is Without You. Yeah. And that's how it came about. And also, shout out to my team, uh, Nathan, uh, Deborah Overkama, to all my team to work on this project. They made it possible for me. Yeah. And shout out to COB for the piano. <laughs> they did amazing. Yeah. Uh, go to Michael's Instagram. I, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I didn't even really drink a lot of my coffee yet, but I'm feeling your energy. And it I'm feels having like... my coffee right now, too. <laughs> then I'm feeling your I'm energy. I'm having my coffee right now, too. Because I'm yeah. not even touching it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Head on over yeah. to Michael's Instagram, Michael Brown uh, Vocals yeah. underscore. Yeah, Michael Brown. Yeah, Michael Brown Vocals. And remember so, to um, add the underscore to it. And you can't miss it. Looking at that photo, literally, <laughs> that looks like a GQ photo. Like, you're a your photographer you, who man. takes your pics. I'm telling thank you, you man. you're black oh, and white. Oh, shout out to CK from Zambia. Yeah, yeah shout out to CK, <laughs> CK Photography, back from Zambia. Like, he's, he's amazing. He's amazing. So I have a team of people that I work with, mm-hmm. like young young producer, young uh, photographer, young videographer. Shout out to Diego. So... Funny story is I was going to add on the other half of me because I was, I literally just moved like to Canada, like I'm one month old right now. So I was like, t- t- talking to my wife, I was saying like, Hey, I want to shoot like a movie video. Like it's snowing out here. We don't really have this type of weather back home. So let's, let's do something. You know what I mean? And she, we had a new baby, so it was kind of hard for her to just be cool and everything, but I'm so glad she was part, a part of it. And I talked to my friend, Lindsay, who, who's one of her friends, and to just shoot a music video with us. We shot the music video, sent it back home to my um, videographer, who's Diego, um, the visual puppy of visual plug. He did his thing and sent it back to me, and we, we, we were just spooked. And I just decided to say, okay, I'm going to drop this video. I love the concept, and I'm going to do more with him. Yeah. So that's how it came about. Yeah. It's and brilliant. this song is like the second. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thank you. And this song is um, one of the songs on the EP. It's called Love Period, which is on all platforms Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. I want to give a big shout out to your incredible support system, your wife, Carly, who's a lab mom. You guys got a lab, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she, she does. She's beautiful. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's, she's a beauty. She is stunning. <laughs> you, baby. You, you listen to me. <laughs> and I can't believe yeah. that she had a baby because she still looks like she's got, she's a size zero. 
Like, I know. And I was like, talking to you all about it. Like, you just looked like you just <laughs> went to pick up one, <laughs> a baby, or bought it on online. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just bought it online and just came back home. Like, baby, have a baby, you know? know? <laughs> you better be careful because yeah. uh, uh, when people find out, uh, you got to be careful with the government and scientists are probably going to want to take samples of her blood and DNA and use it to oh, try to goodness. create a serum <laughs> or some type of youth pill from her her genetics because I can't believe that she had a no. kid. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She, she's amazing. Shout out to her and my baby. Uh, they inspire me a lot every day, you know. It's like a new dad, new into marriage, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to God for all this. And shout out to her family and my family too. And they've been so great to us and I'm enjoying my time here. Yeah. Why Canada? Why did you guys go to Canada? So she's Canadian, and I just want to be here. Like, I mean, this is my start, so it's a beautiful place. I know Canada, you know. It is. Um, I've been to Banff. Yeah. I've got friends who live in Calgary and Toronto. It's a great oh. country. It is. It is amazing. I can't wait to explore every part of it. Yeah. But here's the thing. How are you dealing with the cold? Because that's not something I want to deal with anymore. I come from the New York area. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, like, I thought I was going to be terrible, but surprisingly, I'm good now. Like, I'm getting warmer, and the weather's quite good. Some days it's pretty bad, like negative, you know, like minus, minus 40, you know, and by way in at the house and, you know, having a heated house with coffee you know yeah it's, it's fun man like honestly are you I have everything i ever need in my life so <laughs> i don't care i would be i always had this conversation with her like i'll be anywhere in the world mm -hmm. for like i'll be anywhere in the world where they cold the coldest place on earth i don't care i'll be there with you yeah and how are you maneuvering with your music career is this full time for you are you booking any shows are is, is you know, you and Carly working to either perform locally or you opening any shows for anyone coming up? Um, like right now, I just got started. So this is a big start for me. Even just having a, a, a radio interview with you, this is the first and the biggest thing that has happened to me in my life. And I take it as a blessing. So I'm not yet done any shows. I'm, not, I'm just new to everything here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to work with artists around here and willing to work with anyone around America in general. Yeah. I would say uh, for you and your team, because here in the States, uh, where what works really well uh, are nonprofit radio stations to submit your music to. But before you do that, mm -hmm. make sure this yeah. is the number one thing. And yeah. I say this, this is the, the publicist of me uh, saying this yeah. to you is no what radio stations you're submitting your music to because you don't want to have or get a bad reputation of just setting an email blast and sharing your catalog or mp3 and not know whether mm -hmm. your music fits into that station so here's a couple things michael one okay. check out nonprofit radio stations fm radio stations nonprofit non satellite okay. radio stations college okay. radio stations they're very supportive okay. because they're not owned by big conglomerate, let's say Cumulus Media or iHeartRadio. Uh, so definitely yeah. reach out to, to to college and independent. Uh, myself, I'm an independent satellite radio station. I'm based out of Manchester, Amazing. UK and New York. I own a PR company. So there are people, mm -hmm. I'm the only publicist in the world that's done this. However, there yeah. are people in the world uh, that do have independent radio stations and um, your music, I believe, can fit into a lot. However, I know your, let me double check here. Uh, Thank you. Man. Your Thank music, you. you're welcome. Sure. Your music is considered, the genre is R&B soul. However, I believe it yeah. could also fit into pop. But just do your du yeah, due sure. diligence, you and your team, and know where you're submitting your music to. However, I think that your music can fit into many different places. Um, Thank you, man. Thank you. BBC, uh, I love them. I'm I want to give you this information, oh, wow. too. So hold on. <laughs> Let me pull this yeah. up. Oh, I've got tons. All right, so here's the thing. 
BBC yeah. Music Introducing. You go to their Instagram, Michael, BBC yeah. Introducing. You click that icon, or not the icon, yeah. the link there. I just sent this over yeah. to a friend. They are taking free submissions. Let me see here. Making music, get yourself heard on BBC for free. Oh, and I'm wow. going to tell you, don't oh, wow. ever pay somebody to try to promote your music. Yeah. Only submit. I've learned from a couple of, sorry to cut you, but I've, okay. I've learned from a couple of experiences. Uh, I think back home, is, I'm just like, it's been like a foundation for me for interviews and, and media, you know, and I've learned a couple of things. Maybe things work differently over here, mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely learned a lot with all the radio stuff. I used to, Back in the past, people used to like ask for ridiculous amounts of money just to promote me, you know what I mean? But now, I think I'm more uh, learned and more educated about all that stuff. So I'll definitely not pay anybody <laughs> any ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, And really appreciate you for all that advice, yeah. You're welcome. Uh, just to recap, uh, www.bbc.co.uk. Okay. Put your submissions okay. in Thank for that. So Thank you so much, man. So we've got independent radio stations. We've got college radio stations. We've got places like this where you can submit your music to. And they, they're they really great at responding back and letting you know they received it. It's going to be listened to. There's no guarantee that they'll air it or play it, but, but doing that. Here's they, another great tip, Michael. Very important. Yes. Okay, we have yes. this here in the States with some of our stations. It's called something like Locals Only. If you have radio local stations media. in your local yeah. area in Canada, see if they have yeah. something or reach out to the station and ask, do they feature local music yeah. artists? Yeah. Here in the okay. States, it's called Locals Only, and it's for free. They will do that as a support system. These, lo these stations would do it to support local music artists that live in the local area of where those stations are located. And if you happen to have a city that's 30 miles away still, see if they have something yeah. called either locals only or something that supports local music artists. Um, Amazing, man. Amazing. The other thing, lastly, do. you're welcome. Lastly yeah. is Spotify, iTunes. In the R&B area section or area that your music is in, Check to see yeah. if uh, who the curator is, who the music curator is, or who the um, the manager for that playlist. Because there are times, because here's what I've ran into with music artists and representing them and working with them, is I've been told mm -hmm. by radio stations that are owned by Cumulus and iHeart and other big companies that unless you are signed with a major mm -hmm. uh, Sony Atlantic, they can't, yeah. I've been told, we can't play their music. However, there's a loophole in a lot of things. There are times yeah. to where when you reach out to the people who manage and delegate and to who decide what music goes on to that playlist, you can reach out to them directly and ask, and some will be accommodating, and they will add yeah. your music to Spotify or or iTunes or anything like that. And you don't have to pay for it. And you guys should never have to pay to get your music listened to. Um, and if you do, and you already know this, Michael, uh, that's a big problem. Because we all know that your industry and a way you get paid works differently. Now, it doesn't mean if you have a publicist yeah. or a manager or a booking agent. Yeah, those, yeah. those people get paid. However, when you're submitting music... Um, you don't yeah. need to pay someone to get a review and you shouldn't have review, to, yeah. to pay somebody to, um, to do like what you're doing to, to get an outreach part of your, you know, part of, you know, what you're trying to put out there in the world. And that's great content. Thank you, man. Thank you. I really appreciate you for that, man. Um, a few people would say that, but, uh, you are amazing. Man. And, uh, I love the fact that you, you, you're supporting us as addicts and also trying to put us out there and also just trying to do everything you can and your station, you know, shout out to you guys too. Yeah. One last, so you're welcome. And here's the other thing just to let you know. Yeah. You can make more money by sync licensing than streams and downloads. Now I'm not saying, especially someone like you, Michael, you're blessed. Yeah. Sync mm -hmm. licensing, if you. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you know, is when you get your music on commercials, video games, movies, and things like that. Yeah. 
one of the things, and I don't know if, if Carly's listening or if you've got a pen and paper, United Masters. Yeah, I have a pen and paper. United yeah. Masters. They are a sync licensing company. United? United Masters. You can Google them, yeah. United Masters. And the second company, and they I just spoke with um, uh, music artist Olivia King. She... Um, mm. Uh, I know she worked with a company called Smash Coast Music. Smash okay. Coast Music. Uh, they okay. work with Disney and Peacock. Oh, well. So That's look to get your music placed. Um, and, and, and definitely you, you can make anywhere between five hundred to $50,000 plus with sync licensing, oh, wow. including royalties. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I'll definitely look into it. And um, yeah, I'll definitely look into it. I'm, I'm so grateful for you, man. <laughs> like, you're just a blessing. <laughs> Honestly. Well, I didn't know how this was going to turn out. However, like I said, uh, intuitively, empathically, I'm feeling your energy. I did take a couple sips of my <laughs> coffee, but I'm, I'm loving it. You, you know how to <laughs> command and, and to really engage and You've got the most beautiful spirit. Your your baby is so thank lucky you. to have you as a dad. <laughs> oh man, thank you so much. Man. <laughs> God bless you, man. Like I I, I am I'm amazed at my by your spirit. Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh let's see here. Um you started doing music at, at a young age, drawing major inspiration from your father who taught you how to sing and play various musical instruments, and your mom first yeah. put you on stage when you were 10 years old. Where are your parents yeah. now, and what are their, their thoughts and about you as a, a dad and a, a successful music artist and producer? Um, where do they sit with this and in this journey with you? Okay, so um, my... My dad is still around, and my, my mom passed like 10 years ago, like after my grade 12 exams and stuff, you know. And so the CPC did a lot of, um, she, she contributed a lot to my life, and wherever she is, she knows, yeah. And, and I, I love her so much. And to my dad, he's always been supportive. So um, I'm going to start from this. My mom put me on stage, like, because they discovered now this kid can do stuff, you know, he can mimic songs, he can perform at a young age. So my mom put me on. I remember have them having a conversation even a day before I went on stage at school. Like, they had this conversation, you know, and they really wanted me to concentrate on my school, and we had this conversation, and it was always a um, priority to them, you know. But uh, me doing my, my school and my music together, you know, and then so I did that. And yeah, that's been amazing. Like, like, unlike any other African artist, I mean, parents, it would be like, oh my gosh, you're studying, you're the musician, you know, what, what type of money are you going to make? You're gonna, you know what I mean? So that's a different perspective from back home. Not like I'm sidelining the parents, but there's always that thing in their head, like, oh, you're going to be an artist. You're not going to do it as much, you know. So I really had to go, you know, to my best and just do my best in everything I did. And, yeah, I appreciate my dad every day. Like, he would tell me, he will be coming in the studio and telling me, like, I like this song, you know, remove this part. And he's a musical guy, too. And by the way, he's a, he's a preacher, so I was born in a Christian family, you know. I would always go to church, sing songs, and get inspiration from all that. And I still go to church. So yeah, that's 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 major for me. And my parents, to answer your question, my parents have always sat well with this music, because to them they always believed I could do it from the beginning of me going under the bed, getting plucking that guitar. They always believed and say, "Yo, you can do anything you want in this world." And I appreciate my dad for always being there for me, and he's been amazing to me. Yeah. You expressed most recently, I swear to God, you are more than what I prayed for. My everything, my forever, forever. And this was dedicated to your son. What would you like your son to learn? And what type of yeah. life would you like your son to have? 
being in this world? Yeah, uh, man, I, I can't really protect him from everything. There's a lot going on right now in this world, you know, and things become crazy and crazy. And sometimes you get scared, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, man. So as a dad, I want my son to grow into a spiritual world, into a Christian world, and draw him closer to God, because I know that's how he's going to be straight in that way, you know, and I want him to just learn to be humble and to be respectful, of course, as any other parent wants to teach out. But I want him to learn that you can do anything in this world that you set your mind up to. Be humble, be straight, God, family, and music. And I don't know whatever he wants to do whenever he grows up, whatever, I'm going to be supportive in every way with his mom. Because she's always been supportive to my music too. and. I'll be supposed to have music too and all around, yeah. What's been the most, um, I wouldn't say it's not fundamental. What has been the yeah. most impactful either quote or suggestion or something you learned in church or from your parents? What has really impacted you to open your eyes, Michael, and be like, yeah. wow, this moved me so much to where you stepped forward and you're living yeah. your life from that statement, that moment, that quote, that experience. What was the, the transition? What was the, the big moment, the big aha for you? Well, okay. So uh, I'll start from, so like as I was growing up and I got interested into music and met other people, you know, doing the same thing. Subconsciously, I started to get inspiration, of course, and starting to use it every day in my every life, everyday life. So I went to school later on to go study my, my music because I really wanted to go to school and study. So I got this chance, went to do my master's in music in China. And that was my moment. That was like the, the same moment where I was just like, yo, like, it changed my whole life. I went to China, did my thing, did music, and they appreciated me. But then, God said, you have to go back because I had changed into somebody else that I was not. You know what I mean? I mean, I appreciate all the fans like in China and everyone. They really, really pushed me to, to do better. Uh, but I felt like I was, I didn't have like a figure at that moment, like somebody to look up to, to, to tell me, I didn't even look up to God, you know what I mean? So I literally would go doing other things. I like many other things. I was just like, okay, I to, God just kicked me in the butt and was like, yo, you're going back to Zambia. This is, this is not good. You know, like later on came back to Zambia, did, did my music there. And I think God just came to me when I was back in my dad's place. And I was like, yo, life is just going to real right now. You know what I mean? And I learned from that moment that God came to die for my sins, but he can still give me a second chance. So back when I was in Zambia, I was staying in Zambia for like two years. And then I met my wife. So I met her and we started talking. And without me knowing that this is my miracle, this is my second chance I've been given. I wasted my first, first um, chance. Now I've been given a second chance. Because I went out there in China. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it big. I'm going to do this and that. And I didn't really use it to my, like, for good things. You know what I mean? I didn't say I did pretty bad things, but I just did unnecessary things. You know what I mean? I changed from the person I was, the good person I was. I wouldn't say good person, but the person I was to a different person, you know. And God just said, this is not what I've called you for. What and, I'm, um, go ahead, go ahead. I'm processing. Go ahead. Okay. No, please finish. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, God, just to answer your question, God gave me a second chance to be the person that I need to be for him. And I had to let him in my heart and just, you know, he's given me 
a child is given to my wife. He's, it's a second chance for me to to praise his name using my voice and to do anything. And just to answer your question, the quote that stands out to me is that God came, I mean, Jesus died for my sins. So I, I may be happy, so I, I may have my, my, my wife, so I may have a beautiful life, a, a beautiful son, so I may have this interview with you. <laughs> Despite of all the things that went on in my life, he's just like, I forgive you, son. Mm-hmm. I want you to do this for me. And I want you to sing for me one day. And he's chosen me, and I'm like, wow. And that's it. <laughs> Here's a couple things I'd like to share with you. One, as my mother always said, God does not make mistakes. No, he does not. Number two, my parents who adopted me, my mom was a a nurse. Uh, My dad Mm -hmm. was in the military, and they were deacons in a church. They were also missionaries. And what I learned, whether someone's religious or not, or whatever it is that you may believe in, the fact of it is, is that if anyone believes that they've got purpose, or even if we think about the Christian teachings, what I had learned... And, and what it what I had read and what's in the Bible is that, as you said, Jesus yeah. already died for our sins. The number one thing, and this is a conversation I had, and I'm going to be honest, I stopped going to church because what I had mm-hmm. learned from the teachings is that since we are not a mistake, we are worthy, mm-hmm. we are God's children, we yeah. have the right and responsibility to do our best and to be our best. One of the reasons of why I say I stopped going to church and some of the things that I had of, you know, a little bit of a a discrepancy or battle at times with my parents, because my mom made us go to church. I, I, I did not like that is I didn't like the feeling (laughs) of like any other child, (laughs) like any other child, like it wasn't a request. It was a demand or you were grounded for the week. And that infuriated me even more. Um, (laughs) yeah. <laughs> what really bothered me is, well, that was, my mom too. <laughs> was it is going to yeah. church and if I, and I'm going to be very honest I said to my yeah. parents I said I didn't mind going to church but one of the things I didn't like is going to church and feeling like shit after I left like I'm yeah. not worthy yeah. like I am this yeah. I'm that we're singing songs that we are less than that doesn't sound like yeah. something that Jesus or God would say to me when there are other areas of, of Christian beliefs to to yeah. uh, having and should having a better perspective and insight yeah. of who we are as leaders and children oh, of God. Totally. Yeah. And the third thing I like to say is desperation can really mm-hmm. open your eyes to find out who you are. And why I say that is it goes back to the scripture where it says, be in the world and not of the world. And what it sounds like and what I heard, Michael, is you did your best to not be of the world, even though you're in the yeah. world. However, you somewhere somehow collapsed into becoming yeah. of the world. And that's why those certain things happen. And that's why you were moved and given that sign and that message to go back to your yeah. home. And then that's where yeah. you met your wife. So all of this, even in some of the adversary or may have been perceived as being very um, adversarial, actually became Yeah, it was ally. a blessing in disguise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But totally. I just wanted to share with you that you're not alone and – and, and whether someone is Christian or whatever faith that it may be that somebody has, yeah. I believe mm-hmm. that we are human beings. We are a spirit. You know, we, we're, we're living in a body. And the number one yeah. thing in having a background in psychology and working as a grief counselor, even the most distraught and the most angry and and people that have contempt and resentment and hatred and jealousy, whether you come from a place of love and acceptance or a place of hostility and resistance and resentment, we all somehow want to be accepted and loved. 
And there are just times to where it comes out in healthy ways. And there are times when it doesn't seem to come out in a very healthy way. And then it's our responsibility, whether you are a person of faith or not, it is, is it's each person's responsibility to help either nurture and or set boundaries and hold accountability because no one should live life Mm -hmm. um, in desperation, in poverty, in starvation, in fear. That is, Mm -hmm. no one should live a life like that. So with that being said, for you, Michael, uh, I'm not saying you don't. It's not that I heard that this is an emotional place or space of where you are. Just know that consider and know where you're at now that everything has served you and that even through and in decisions that at the time may not have been pleasing to God or considering maybe the most healthiest or in your best interest you've learned and yeah. there are times that making certain decisions that may not seem to be in self-love or loving or selfless yeah. We can never learn unless we understand the other side of things. Well, I really appreciate that, man. Yeah. Does that help? It does. It does totally. Like that's that's a different perspective, and yeah, I totally agree with that. Why I'm saying that to you, Michael, is I'm paying attention to your inflection and and how you're saying something, also what you're yeah. saying. I don't yeah. hear and feel that feel that you live in regret. One of the things yeah. as one person that comes from a very, very intense Christian background to another is that mm-hmm. putting fear, and I know I don't believe you're going to do this, but I feel that you can no. relate to this <laughs> since you're a dad. Yeah. I know from myself, okay. if I were to be a yeah. father, I would be very mindful to make sure or making sure that I don't put or surround my child with fear as what my parents yeah. did for me, worrying that the devil's going to be attacking me all the time. And I, I said to my mom, mm-hmm. you believe in God, you believe in the power of prayer. Why do you yeah. fear Satan? And why do you Satan, fear yeah. what Satan can do when no one yeah. has permission to lay swords against me? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I agree with that, man. Taking a moment of pause and breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that, man. Like, honestly, it's it. Like, I, I don't want to instill fear in, in my child. I really want them to know that God is there for, for, for them. And you can do anything, you know, that you set your mind to. And you can talk to God like he's... He's the creator, you know, he's, he's the one that brought you on this earth. So, yeah. With feeling all of that love and, and that, that moment of sitting in, into that, are you ready to hear your official debut of other half on power 98.5? So yes, like I am <laughs> excited. man. I'm excited. man. Let's do this, man. Honestly, man. <laughs> We're into our feelings a lot, so like, let's get, let's get it. All righty. I want to thank everyone for being with us and being patient and and to listening to Michael's story and sharing um, of him sharing what what his journey is all about at 27 years old. And it is with great honor that we are going to premiere "Other Half" by music artist and producer. Mr. Michael Brown. Oh, oh, oh. It's Michael Brown, oh yeah. Other half of me, I think I'm getting weary. Believe me, I'm in love I don't know where we going Better have for me Now I'm getting with me Believe me, I'm in love I don't know where I go But you're the other half of me But you're the other half of me 
Got you the other half of me You're my baby Better half for me Better half for me oh, oh. I swear to God you all I need I know I care for If I'm being honest girl You're more than what I pray for Won't let nobody come between us, I'll be careful I swear to God you all I need so I'll be faithful Let me see what's on your mind Anxious to heat up your life oh, oh, But you're the other half of me oh, oh, no, no, no. But you're the other half of me You're my baby Ending is perfection. Thank you, Ness. <laughs> Thank you so much. How do you feel hearing it live? I feel amazing. Like I, this is a miracle for me. I always wanted to infuse my music with classical music. You know, being like going to school, I was listening to like in the university when I was having like my musical master's classes, I always listened to classical music and I always listened to Afrobeat. So Afrobeat is like the sound that is from Africa with the drums and everything. So I always wanted to infuse that. But then I, I couldn't find a really good sample until I found like this piano sound. I was like, this is the sound I really want to. And I put that sound at the end. I literally like I was almost bowling. I was like, okay, I love this. Like I literally just want to do this. Yeah. It's perfection. And we have a message for you. And, and I yeah. really hope I'm pronunciating this correctly. Hi, I am innocent Conda sending love to Michael Brown. I am following from Zambia or Zambia. I oh, love wow. you, Michael. Oh, wow. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. And after you, man. And, just in case you didn't know, I just posted it on my Facebook. So all my fans are listening to this and 
it's just amazing. All my friends from China, all my friends from all over the world are listening to this. Shout out to you guys. Oh my God, the, the, <laughs> the turnout is incredible where everyone is ecstatic. And what's most important is music, professional music artists and producers like you and the support system that you have into everyone that is listening. And once again, thank you, Innocent. And, and that's K-A-U-U-N-D-A. Thank you for the yeah. message. That is why we're here. Thank that you is so why much, this station yeah. is exists is for people and professionals like you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Any closing thoughts? Um, shout out to my family. Shout out to my wife. Shout out to my baby. She, she's just inspiring me every day. And I'm, I'm working on a new album. Yeah, this year. And uh, look out for that one. I'll be shooting videos and stuff in this uh, country and I'll be traveling everywhere. Yeah. And I'm grateful for everyone who's tuned in to listen to this uh, interview. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me on this interview. This is a blessing to me. And let's do more, man. Oh, we are. Remember, we've got three yeah. of your tracks streaming live you, right now added to the <laughs> station. And just to, uh, just to share it, it is an honor to have you here with us today. Thanks. And this happened because of your prayers it's happening because of your belief it's happening because of your faith it's happening because of your persistence and diligence amen to do what you do and because you're doing it with love and in love thank you man. thank you so much man with love you win every everything man love always wins at the end right absolutely who would you like to give a shout out to i'd like to give a shout out to my video guy diego Clement has been so awesome to me. My team, um, my artist YD is back home in, in, in Zambia. Shout out to my fans in Zambia. Shout out to my new fans in Canada. Shout out to my family in Canada. And shout out to my friends and people back in Zambia. That's it's such a blessing. And shout out to Par 98.5 for having me on the show. Shout out to you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. Man. You're welcome, man. Thank you for having me, man. You deserve it. Stay on the line. Uh, we're going to close yeah. out with Other Half by Mr. Michael Brown, music artist, producer. And um, let's do this. It's been a great and day. Steve? Yeah. I, I want you to do one more thing for me. Yeah. Say Zambia Cuchado. Let me turn on the music. Let's turn on the music. It's, 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 say that one more time, please. Okay, you say Zambia. Zambia? You say it after me. Cuchado. Cuchado. Yes, it means Zambia to the world. <laughs> Zambia, Cuchado. Cuchado. Right? Cuchado. Yes. yes, perfect. Oh, you're good. You're natural. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, you can teach me more. I'm not kidding. Sure, I will. I will, man. I will. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you for to everyone for tuning in. Live on air with Stephen Cook on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Whether you're listening to us on the iOS or Android app, and we are also available on Alexa, you can add Power 98.5 into your Alexa and listen anywhere in your car, on your phone, in your home, as well as all things Power 98.5, power985.com. Thank you to everyone today. Thank you to Innocent Conda. Or, uh, and I really hope I'm pronunciating that. Michael's going to be teaching me how to pronounce things. Um, I'm going to read this one more time. Uh, sending love to Michael Brown. I am following from Zambia. I love you, Michael. Thank you to everyone from here and all over the world. Have a beautiful and most wonderful weekend. And remember, you are blessed. You are not a mistake. You are loved. You are needed. And you are here in this world for a reason. It does not matter the size of that reason. You are breathing for a reason. And you have a way to be a helping hand for a reason. Be that helping hand. Have a great weekend, everyone. Like my baby, yeah. loving, transcending. I'm dressed into your magic forever.
but just imagine Keep it on a high note, I know, I know I mean every line, I know, I know, I know Oh, I we think I know for me. Hey. I think I'm getting weary, weary. Baby, I'm in love oh. I don't know where we going Better have for me Now I'm getting weary Believe me, I'm in love I don't know where I go But you the other half of me But you the other half of me You're my baby Better half for me Better half for me Oh, oh. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.